adding an internal Bluetooth audio receiver to an old stereo. Before I start, make sure that your old audio device has an auxiliary audio input port like this aux in here on this old Panasonic stereo. On this Sony boombox, we have the option of using the internal contacts of this 3.5mm audio in jack. And finally, on this old Sony amplifier, we can use the opposite sides of the RCA stereo inputs. You'll need to purchase a Bluetooth audio receiver, which is sold on Amazon or other online vendors. The receiver that I bought is a basic one, but there are others with a built-in amplifier to boost the audio levels, but I don't need my volume levels to be that high. You could connect and hang the Bluetooth module off your old stereo device, but that looks messy in my opinion. Plus it is far better to see the bewildering faces of friends and family when you control the music via your phone on an old audio device made before Bluetooth was even invented. I will cover adding the internal Bluetooth module to two old stereos, but you can apply the theory to a wide range of old stereos. First the Sony amplifier. Make sure the stereo device is disconnected from the power outlet before starting. Remove the outer case. At the rear of the amplifier I trace the positive and negative connections for each channel from the exterior to the interior with a multimeter in continuity beep mode. Next I cut the ends of an old RCA stereo cable and expose the internal positive and negative wires for the left and right channels. I tin the ends with solder and insulate the majority of the exposed wire with shrink tubing. I then solder the wires of the RCA plug to the positive and negative connections for the left and right channels on the inside. Another quick test to see if the audio cables are soldered correctly. The Bluetooth module is mounted with a double sided adhesive pad against the rear panel. The Bluetooth receiver that I am installing needs to be powered via a USB charger, so I shall recycle an old one. The next step requires some basic electrical knowledge, so get some help if you are unsure. I cut the stereo's incoming power cord, as we need to make a three-way junction. Next I strip back the positive and negative wires, and add one additional one amp wire. I twist the three positive wires together. I solder the free wire connection and insulate all the cables with thermal shrink tubing. I do the same for the negative wires. An alternative to soldering would be to use a Weigel connector for the free wires or a wire nut. The opposite end of the additional wires need to be soldered to the positive and negative pins of the USB charger. I solder the wire to the pins and then insulate them with shrink tubing and some electrical tape. Like before, I use a double-sided adhesive pad to stick the USB charger against the rear panel. Any excess wires are held in place with cable ties. A final test before putting on the case and all is good. The install was very similar on the Panasonic stereo, even though there was less space for the USB charger and the Bluetooth module which were held in place with hot glue. Soldering the audio wires to the auxiliary left and right channels was more time consuming on the Panasonic stereo as I had to take out the whole center unit and then solder to these points on the circuit board. I hope this video has inspired you to bring your old stereo into the modern world. If the video was useful, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to my channel. Many thanks.